Have you heard what they have planned next? <laughs> they have things planned. They know what you're doing. They have planned these things for years. They put in predictive programming into television shows and movies. And they are the most intelligent people in the world. They're the most powerful. They this, they that. Um, what does the Bible say about the conspiracy? They, the... 1%, the, uh, the uh, Jesuits, the Illuminati, the Bilderbergers, the Freemasons, the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, the World Economic Forum, the whatever, keep naming them, Club of Rome and all these other organizations. Uh, what do the, you know, what's the Bible say about them? Let's go to the scriptures and I'll show you. We're in the book of Psalms, Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Kind of puts things into perspective, doesn't it? The kings and the rulers taking counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Uh, that's the battle there. These people try to go against you and I. Those that are uh, saved, that are born again, part of Christ's body. These uh, people plot against us. And part of their propaganda is that they're so intelligent and that they've planned these things for years. And, you know, they know, they know uh, all these things. No, not really. Um, and I think a lot of times Christians can give them a little bit too much credit. And I think that that's the wrong thing to do. Um, let me put some stuff down here. See if you can tell me what this is in the comments section below. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's not an Illuminati scepter or something like that, proving my uh, allegiance to the Illuminati and the Jesuits and I'm a high-level Mason or something. Okay, it's not the claw of destiny or something. It's a staff. It's a claw of destiny. Yeah, some of the stuff that's said about me online is kind of funny. But um, tell me if you know what that is. Tell me in the comment section below. Let me put it down there. I have to get the gate here. Um, so let me get this thing opened up. But uh, this whole thing of the conspiracy world. Um, if you're newly saved or if you're just trying to find the truth, what you do have to understand is that there are people that are part of uh, quote unquote elite circles and that these people, um, they're, they come up with things to ways to control, ways to depopulate, ways to make lots of money, keep it away from the common folks and whatever. And, uh, and you know, if you understand that, you will understand that uh, a lot of the things that happen in this world are not by coincidence. They are done. They are planned. Um, let me explain it to you this way. Imagine, if you will, a farm. A farmer that has uh, pastures and things like that. The farmer would represent the elite here in this thing. The elite organizations, the you know, whatever, I've named a bunch of them already. And what they do is, they want to keep people in the pasture. They treat you like sheep. The Lord likened people to sheep. All right, so sheep are very dumb. Sheep tend to do things in uh, flocks and herds. And they will get in there and they'll be, you know, whatever, what are the, all the other sheep doing? You know, they're just content to be out there eating grass and, and everything and don't worry the shepherd will keep us safe the farmer he'll he'll protect us and whatever and the farmer can say okay i'm going to move you from one pasture to another i'm going to shear you now i'm going to slaughter some of you and uh if the vet needs to come and give you injections we can do that as well that's just what it is and i'm not trying to refer to, refer to anything else or anything there <laughs> but uh um, that's the way things work there. Well, think of it th that way to understand what the, how the groups, these big bankster gr guys, um, how they control. Okay. 
they control through basically herd mentality they control through um, bringing people together and getting them to submit to certain roles and and whatever else um, so but you'll see this thing of you know they'll make predictions they'll they'll do different things and oh it came true oh look at that oh they're so intelligent no actually they're not uh, again another way to explain these elite groups and you can see this is that they're philosophers I'll show you here I had to cut a pathway through this thick brush here to get to the apple tree you can see right there behind me there um, but uh, these guys they will uh, they'll come up with different ideas and different philosophical notions and things I mean that's what they do they just sit around and they talk about stuff you can look at their meetings you know you have Masonic Lodge meetings they come together and how do we make the community a better place should we put you know money into this or that or whatever you know um, can we vote on this thing here can we vote on that thing there the politicians they come out and they say um, you know can we should we do this or should we do that will, will that affect my campaign will it affect my donors will I get in trouble or you know whatever um, and uh, that's what they do let me show you here these little small apples you can see them right there um, very good tasting but uh, just kind of give you an idea here if you're seeing that hey be quiet this is my apple tree see if you didn't know what this was I just gave it away yeah yeah a squirrel up here he's mad at me um, well, tough tough apples um, because you see it's my tree there so you can just calm down there buddy and um, okay <laughs> sorry about that but let me show you down here on the ground if you can see back in there you can see a lot of the yellow little apples they've already fallen down unfortunately so let's put that out here we'll be picking here in a little bit but um, walk back out through this dense little area here. Uh, okay. Now, now I can walk a little bit better and talk because I had to get the stuff delivered out there for picking apples. Sorry about that. But this is a very important topic. And... Um, you know, I try to do these talks as I can. Instead of setting up the whole thing in the studio, I try to get as many of these videos done. So that's why I'm doing that. In case you didn't know. But, getting back to what I'm trying to say here. Uh, the elite, they're just philosophers. That's why the Bible warns about um, being spoiled by philosophy. You know, the wisdom of man. They come out and they say, well... Back in the Roman times, they did this. Well, yes, but the Greek philosopher Plato said it this way, you know. Um, well, I'm more into Socrates. And, well, if we were to control the population, how would we do it? And, and they come out with all of this stuff, ways that they can control uh, people, and ultimately ways that they can combat us, the children of God, those of us that are born again, those of us that are saved. And they try to say, let's do this and let's do that and uh you know this whole predictive programming thing oh you know they they showed this in some movie or in some tv show years ago and now they're they're bringing it out well yeah well that proves how smart they are no it doesn't okay because i can guarantee you for every one thing that they you know planned back in the past there's probably a thousand things that they haven't been able to bring out you know probably their playbook they're just saying okay well, we can what should we do? Well, let's try that one thing, you know. And again, part of the way that prophecy works is you can look at current trends and you can see which way things are going and you can say, well, if this trend continues, um, this is going to happen, okay? Uh, I can prophesy, quote unquote, that the dollar is going to crash. Oh, he has insider knowledge, he knows. No, no, it's just because all paper fiat currencies 
eventually crash. All these currencies out there that are backed by just the confidence of the people, you know, at first they say that it's backed by gold. Then later on, oh, well, it's not backed by gold anymore because we're printing so much of it. You know, we'll just keep printing more and more. So it's not really backed by gold anymore. It's just your confidence. You believe it's backed by something, so therefore it's fine. Um, no. Uh, but the, all currencies like that, all paper currencies have failed. So if I say the dollar will eventually crash, you know, I get people, oh, the dollar's strong. The dollar's going to be fine. Uh, no, the dollar's not fine. The whole debt system is going to collapse. Uh, and you don't have to be some kind of an insider or something um, to know that. You can just look and say, well, that's the way it's going to be. Again, you know, I've had people, you know, philosophize, philosophize that, uh, that I'm part of the elite because I know so much insider information. Uh, no, I'm, I am part of an elite group, I will say that. A very small minority of the people. The most elite group of elite groups. You say, what's that? It's called the body of Christ. All right. Um, bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. Yes, I am part of that group. And the Holy Spirit of God reveals things to me. And if you're saved, if you're born again, uh, he will reveal things to you as well. He will show you things to come. Uh, you're not in darkness down here saying, I wonder how things are going to go. We might be in the end times. We might not be in the end times. We might, you know, it might be getting better. Uh, no, you can look and you can see things. And what we have to do as Christians is we have to be able to discern and know the times and the seasons and understand things and say, okay, um, if this is the way that they're moving things, they, you know, again, these uh, children of the devil, um, then how do we combat this? How do we maintain our freedom? Oh, brother, you know, we should just give up and just let, him, let them go and let them do whatever they want and we should never speak against the devil's people and, and we should just simply say, well, you know, it's prophesied that we're all going to die, so let's all get prepared to, to die. And Okay, they took over and I'm okay with it now. And, you know, no, we shouldn't. We have to be aware of their tactics. We're not supposed to be ignorant of the devil's devices the Bible talks about. And, um, and again, the Lord, what does the Lord think? All right, what did we read earlier in Psalm 2? Is it that he's up there going, <laughs> biting his nails, and I didn't think that they could do that. They're so capable. They're so intelligent. You know, and David Rockefeller died a number of years ago, and, you know, he gets up there before the Lord, and the Lord says, Oh, Mr. Rockefeller, oh, oh boy, you still, you have a lot of money. <laughs> People have these weird notions, and I've seen that, that these people will come out with some of this stuff, and I understand what they are. A lot of the people, if you're coming out and you're saying that, you know, these, the Illuminati's all powerful, they know everything, well, then you're one of them, okay? Um, and I understand that there is a level of power there. I'm not denying that. I'm just simply saying if you're giving them too much credit and acting like they are just unstoppable or something, then I have some serious questions about you because they're not unstoppable. Uh, the Lord's up there in heaven laughing at them, you know. And uh, boy, brethren, you, you need to remember that, all right? And uh, I want to show you another portion of scripture here um, that uh, talks about the Lord actually mocking these people when their fear comes. Let's look at this scripture really quickly. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24 says, Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress, distress and anguish cometh upon you, then they... Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. So how about that? Um, not only is the Lord laughing at them and then uh, destroying them, uh, he's actually up in heaven mocking them when their fear comes. You know, 
it's an interesting thought. Imagine the God of heaven, and he's up there and he's laughing at these people. <laughs> it's one of my favorite pictures of the Lord. You know, that, oh, we're so worried, all oh, this, the Illuminati takeover and all this other stuff. The Lord says, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Um, pretty interesting there. Uh, if you're newly saved, again, you have to understand that there is a level of sarcasm with God. It isn't just this thing of, you know, just this kind of new agey, nice thing of, you know, the word nice isn't even in the King James Bible. Remember that. Uh, but this, oh, just kind of, oh, I don't want to judge anybody and I don't, I don't want to be mean towards anybody. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can be mean to people and not hate them. All right, uh, if somebody is committing a crime and you see them and you grab them and tackle them and take them to the ground, oh, that's a terrible thing. To, why would you do a thing like that? Well, because you're trying to stop them from committing a crime and getting worse. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. A very important verse back in the book of Ecclesiastes. You have to execute judgment speedily. Um, hey, you know what? That stuff that you're drinking, that's inappropriate. Hey, you know what? That cigarette that you're smoking, that's not good for you. Hey, you know something? I mean, let's get, really get radical here. That uh, soda pop or poison pop, I like to call it, that stuff's bad for you. It's going to give you health problems. You know, a lot of the Mountain Dew and things like that, it has hydrogenated vegetable oil in it. That stuff is banned in China. Communist China, it's banned. But here in America, that's legal when you put it in drinks. It's bad for you. You know how I know that? Because I used to drink it. I used to drink stuff like that. I used to drink a lot of that poison. And I was sick a lot. And then I got tired of being sick and I started to get into natural health. That's why I warn people about that. Oh, you're so mean. You're so, you're so angry and whatever. No, I'm not. I'm not mean. Uh, you might perceive it as me being mean and nasty and whatever else. But the truth of the matter is I do it because I care about people. You know, and uh, these elites, if you truly care about their soul, we should pray for them and think, no, we should actually stop them from what they're doing. We should be constantly warring against them. Think of ways that they do things and expose them. Bring it to light. All right? Um, you know, and you don't have to get into the satanic deep dark rituals and they do this level of perversion and that level of pervert. You don't need to get into that stuff. Okay? Um, we're to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And then the Bible goes on to say, It is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. All right, um, don't even, you don't need to get into all that stuff. Illuminati blood rituals, eh, eh, you know, I mean, you can show some of that, I guess, to, to wake some people up. Certainly that's fine. But, uh, you know, the main thing is here, brethren, we have to, you know, fight these people. It's important. Here comes trouble. What do you want? Our dog, Luther. Uh, so, but anyhow, um, just always remember those two passages of, of scripture, Psalm two, Proverbs chapter one, um, because they're very important portions of scripture because it puts things into perspective. Um, all, all these, uh, high powered people and they have all this stuff planned. They, 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 did you hear what they just did and. Texas, did you hear what they just are doing? They are meeting in Washington, D.C. and They are doing this and they are doing that. Yeah, they are. These groups do meet and they do dastardly deeds and whatever else. Well, then what should we do about it? Um, very simple. Fight them. We have the power to do that. Unless you believe that their God is better than our God. Their God, Satan. Uh, I don't believe that way. Not for one second. So, I just wanted to do this video, just as a little bit of an encouragement to you out there. Um, keep in perspective, keep in mind, uh, God knows what they're doing. None of their plans or schemings are hidden from God, and God laughs at it, okay? 
saying 0.1, 0.2. I'm not giving satanic hand signals here. So <laughs> to all the people out there that get all excited and try to prove them, whatever. Uh, no, I'm saying one and two. All right, uh, very important there. Um, God knows. God knows what they're, they're doing. All right, so all of their plans and everything else, it's all going to be brought to naught. Not going to amount to anything. In other words, one other point I want to make before I close this video is the thing of Romans chapter 13 about the powers that be are ordained of God. Um, there isn't anybody in power that God doesn't control. Okay? The Bible says about you know evil things being done in a city and the Lord hath not done it. The Bible talks about that as well. And again... Hollywood has created this weird, perverted, twisted version of what the Bible actually teaches. That God is in heaven on his throne and the devil's in hell on his throne. No, actually that's not true. God is in heaven on his throne, that part is true, but the devil's not in hell. The devil hasn't been to hell yet, he doesn't want to go there. The devil, right now, dwells in heaven with God. Oh, what? You know, if you're newly saved or something, or if you're just... You're not aware of what the Bible teaches? That's what the Bible teaches. You can read about that in Job chapter 1. The devil has to answer to God. He has to appear before God and say what he's doing. Um, he actually is forced to, um, you know, he takes orders from God. All right, so, uh, well, then God's allowing all this, or doing all this evil and things. Uh, well, the evil that happens in this world is a result of man's sin and God's punishment of that sin. Okay, so again, well, the Illuminati and all this, they're doing things, you know, by the power of the devil. They're, they're, uh, the seething energies of Lucifer are theirs to command and all this other stuff. Manly Palmer Hall wrote that about high-level Masons. And, uh, boy, they're just so powerful and everything. No, they're not. Um, you have a situation there where, uh, I can hear a car coming. Let me get turned around here and go back. But you have a situation where these people are put into positions of power and in their minds they're thinking, oh, we have all this great stuff and whatever. And the Lord gives them the free will to come up with things. They can leave at any time. Um, they get to a point where they harden their hearts and then they aren't going to leave. Uh, you get into the really deeper levels of these groups. Well, then, yeah, you try to leave, they'll kill you. But early on you can leave. You can come out and you can tell the truth. But... It's people of very low character that get into these secret societies and whatever. They're not men, not men of uh, high intellect or high character. Uh, very low character. But the whole point is, God allows them with their free will to do all this different stuff. But they aren't outside of his control. Not There isn't anything in the universe, anything out there, there isn't anything... Whatever you want to call it, all of God's creation, whatever. I know somebody's going to say, the word universe isn't in the Bible. Yeah, I get it. But whatever common English term you want to use for everything, all of God's creation, there isn't any part of it that is outside of God's control. Okay? Now, the hyper-Calvinists take that and they say, well, then all the bad things, God controls it. God directs all bad things. No, that's not true because they forget free will. All right? God gives people free will. So they choose by their free will to scheme and to do other things to destroy their opponents, their enemies. You know, they can't take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, like we read at the beginning of the video. Um, and that's what they do. And as a result, it creates a lot of sin. They get into all this philosophical stuff of how they can destroy morality. And you know, it always backfires. That's the thing that's just so funny to me. I mean, they're just so brilliant, and yet they constantly make up systems that contradict other things and make other problems. And, you know, I just kind of, we'll just do right, and you wouldn't have those problems. Um, you know, we're going to destroy morality, but then we're going to try to create a World War III. But how can we do that when we've already destroyed patriotism? Because you can't fight wars without patriotism. You have low morale with the military, you're not going to win a war. See what I'm saying? They, they destroy themselves by their own scheming. And the Lord lets them do that. The Lord gave man free will. 
Again, why does God create evil? Why does God allow all this stuff? Because he gives men free will. And you can do what you want, all right? Uh, God is not, I mean, God could have just made us all robots, but then how do you exercise free will with that? You wouldn't. So again, understand that. Um, well, I'm interested in salvation, but I, don't, I just don't understand why God allows all this evil. Well, it's because of man's free will. He lets men make up their minds. And if you've had bad things done to you, it's not that God, uh, you know, caused it or something. No, God allows it to happen. And you can get away from that and you can recover from bad things. So don't blame God for what happens. Blame man, all right? And God created hell for the devil and his angels and for all of those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ, reject God and his word. So the Lord's going to take care of it, don't worry. You know, that's what hell's for. People burn forever and in, in, uh, first in hell, they burn and then they go to the lake of fire after Revelation chapter 20, including the devil. So the uh, Lord's going to take care of everything. Don't worry about it. Um, but the rulers that are in right now, we have uh, Joe Biden, uh, I guess you can call that a ruler, but uh, um, barely qualifies to even be a man. But uh, that guy there, um, oh, he's the president of the United States. Well, I don't believe that. I believe he's just a, a little walking dead man that comes out and does, you know, reads a speech off of a teleprompter when they tell him to. But uh, just a complete joke, that guy. Um, but again, he goes and he's at these meetings and they tell him what to do. Um, I mean, you can see the meetings with uh, Zelensky from Ukraine and he goes and he's meet, meeting at the Pope and they're sitting there giving him his orders, you know. And he looks just like a little whipped puppy dog taking, writing things down, what he's supposed to do and what he's supposed to say. Um, the philosophers tell the leaders what to do and they control them through money and whatever else, their different financial connections. Uh, just a, it's, you look back, you step, step back at the whole thing and look and you just say, this is a mess, <laughs> total mess. And the beautiful part about that is, brethren, that uh, the Lord's going to bring it to an end. Um, we don't have another 50 years on this earth. Uh, 50 years from now, I believe we're going to be into the Millennial Kingdom. And I don't mean exactly 50 years. Don't take me wrong there. Oh, he's predicting dates and whatever. No, I'm saying I believe it won't go another 50 years till the Lord brings this whole thing, time of Jacob's trouble, into the Millennial Kingdom. Well, it already all happened. Okay, rocks your brains. Um, then, uh, and again, there's no nice way for me to put that. If you think everything has all happened already, the book of Revelation and whatever, um, and it's all just symbolic. You know, a third of all the trees burned up and all the green grass burned up all over the world. And the rich men were hiding in the rocks and, and dens of the mountains, you know, calling them to fall on them and whatever, to hide themselves from the face of the Lamb. You know, Revelation chapter 6 talks about that towards the end there. Um, God sealed the 144,000 Jews and, you know, it's all taken place. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. And again... All the people that say this historicist position, they all are interested in one thing. They want to rob the Lord Jesus Christ of physical rule on the earth. All of them. Every single one of them. There is no millennial kingdom. You see, it all happened in the past. So we're just going to take away the kingdom of Jesus Christ that was promised to him in Psalm 2, which we covered at the beginning. Uh, you keep reading there in Psalm 2 and you'll see where it talks about the kingdom that's promised and rule that's promised to the son from the father. So uh, I keep seeing this in the comments and I'm just deleting it. I just, okay, if I see it, I delete it. I don't have time for it. It's just a satanic heresy. I've answered it a number of times. So I'm not going to continue letting it go. But um, so just wanted to do a quick video here this morning. I realize my quick videos usually end up to be a half hour but um, there's a lot to talk about when you get into the Word of God. But uh, just, uh, I wanted to encourage all the brethren out there, and remember, uh, they can plan all they want to, but God controls everything. God controls every bit of it. 
And if you're not saved and you've actually watched this whole video, then you need to get saved. It's very important. There isn't anything more important. No powerful connections or weapons or anything else that can fight them. Uh, we need to get more people saved. And when you have a lot of people saved and the majority of the people understanding the Bible, um, then things go well in a society. So, we're going to get out of here now. The bugs are really starting to get bad here this morning. It's been up in the mid-80s again during the day. Fahrenheit, of course. Uh, if it's in the mid-80s Celsius, Celsius uh, that would be uh, pretty deadly. <laughs> um, but it was pretty cold. Here are some of the other videos uh, that I was doing. But it's getting, it's getting kind of warm now again. Uh, but the fall is almost here. Autumn is almost here. And uh, then it'll be nice and cool at night. Be able to sleep good. Uh, it's a little bit rough when it's like this. But get through it. So uh, just thank you to everybody out there, of course, as always, for your support of the ministry. Thank you to all those who pray for us. That does mean a lot. And let's let's fight these stupid devils, okay? Let's not be intimidated by them. All they're going to do this, they are going to do that. They are, you aren't going to believe it, brother. They came up with this weapon. They came up. No weapon that's formed against us shall stand or prosper. I can't think of how the verse goes right now. Um, they can come up with all the, that they want to, but, uh, you know, their future is already written down. And again, you know, let me answer that one while I'm, here on this subject oh the uh, the bible is actually written by the illuminati because they're following it exactly <laughs> that's another thing so stupid these the nutty nonsense that you'll hear attacks on the scriptures you know uh it's the bible is you know this end times playbook yes it is but it also includes the destruction of them the wealthy and whatever else uh <laughs> So uh, don't don't worry about it. God's got it all figured out. Uh, they'd be foolish. The elites would be foolish to follow the Bible as their end times playbook because it includes their own destruction. Uh, no, the Bible is coming to pass exactly as it's been written, the King James Bible, because it's God's word. It's a, a more sure word of prophecy that you're to take heed to. So we will see you in the next video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. There is only one Holy Bible. That's the King James Bible. And there's the old website. And uh, you can go to kingjamesvideoministries.com or to kjvm.org.